Subhanallah. Thank you so much, Sayyid Haydar Jaizani, for that beautiful recitation of the dua that we should recite after Fajr. It never fails to amaze me the beautiful duas that the Ahl al Bayt والسلام, have left for us to use. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, and welcome to Hijab and Etiquette. The hijab and modesty is such an important part of this religion. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad once said that each religion has a distinguishing feature and the feature of the religion of Islam is haya, modesty. Inshallah today we're going to be talking about the right to choose to wear the hijab and joining me is our special guest Sister Masuma Jaffa. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So, basically, the first question I want to ask you is like, we as individuals, do we have the right to decide whether we want to wear the hijab or not? I think you have to take the question further back. Um, the choice is whether we want to be a Muslim or not. Mm -hmm. The choice is whether I want to. I believe in a God and whether I want to then follow what that God tells me to do. Um, so yes, we do have a choice in what religion to follow, whether to believe in a God or not. And I have to come to that realization with my own understanding. Once I have decided that there is a God, once I have decided that Islam is the religion that I want to follow, mm -hmm. then there is no choice. Then it's a matter of you know, listening to the creator who created me because I truly believe that what he is telling me to do is for my benefit, not for him. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. You know, we've all chosen to follow the religion of Islam and we shouldn't treat this religion as like a buffet that we pick and choose the bits that suit us and ignore the things that we don't. And at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is closer to us than our jugular vein. He knows what is good for us. So as a Muslim, we should submit to his will and have that taqwa. We should have that tawakkul, mm. that faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he knows what is good for us and what is bad for us. I think the problem is when we look at the rulings of Islam, we look at it with our limited knowledge, one, and we look at it um, from our experiences in the physical realm mm -hmm. and Islam was never about the physical body it's always been about the spiritual soul yes I am not my body mm -hmm. my body is just carrying who I truly am which is my soul my soul is the thing that will continue on the journey and when God has given us these rulings the the reason the purpose behind the rulings are for the soul and not for the body but we try to understand the rulings according to our body and that's where we go wrong and, that, and then we turn around and say well it doesn't make sense to me of course it doesn't make sense to me mm -hmm. because I'm looking at it from the physical perspective whereas the ruling is there for me to take care of my soul mm -hmm. yes that's a really lovely point actually um, another thing that I'd really like to discuss is like introducing the hijab to our young daughters now you know many of the daughters in our community they want to copy their mothers and their sisters and their friends but there's an air of controversy around this do you think that there is anything wrong with you know encouraging a young girl to wear the headscarf not at all i think you know i think it's really important for us as parents to role model um, the appropriate behavior, mm -hmm. um, role model, submission to Allah. And, you know, they will initially, they will follow us when it suits them and that's fine because they're very young. Um, so when they want to wear it, encourage them to wear it. And when they don't want to wear it, that's fine too. Um, but working towards a stage where once they become balik, then they realize that this is something that they will do um, because they know that God has told them to do it mm -hmm. and they will submit to his will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, in, in the last few months, um, Ofsted, uh, there has been controversy with the recent Ofsted plans. What would you say are the pros and cons of Ofsted's view towards the hijab? I don't, I can't see any pros in the way that they're looking at the hijab. Mm -hmm. It's quite sad that, you know, they're coming from the perspective of that 
they understand that it's, as Muslims, we have to wear the hijab when we reach puberty. Mm. So why are we forcing our children to wear it before then? Mm -hmm. I think it's wrong for them to presume that we're forcing our children. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're, you know, the, the word is encouragement rather than forcing, mm -hmm. um, in the same way that you would encourage your child to do homework. Mm -hmm. when it, they don't have to as a young child, you know, when, when, when the teacher tells them to go and read something or maybe draw something, you'd encourage your child to do that. Mm -hmm. And as they get older and it becomes more important for them to, to make sure that they do their homework, then obviously you're a little bit more forceful. Mm -hmm. The same sort of principle. I think it's sad that within the Western world, either hijab is either looked at sexualizing our children mm -hmm. or oppressing our women. There doesn't yeah. seem to be any middle ground. Yes, we can't win either way, no. can we? No, it's ridiculous. And, and the hijab is, you know, so different to either of those extremes. Mm -hmm. Hijab is what gives me my freedom. Mm -hmm. Hijab is what liberates me. Hijab is what gives me my confidence. Hijab mm -hmm. is, you know, where I am, I want to scream out to the world, I'm a Muslim and I'm proud of being a Muslim. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. And why are you taking that away from me? And to, you know, to, and, and first of all, we're not told what questions will be asked. We're not told what will be done with the answers that they get. And I think the mo most important thing is that y you're going to take a young child away from their peers because of something that they're wearing yes. and, and ask them questions about their clothing. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, how is that allowing the child to explore themselves? And, and you know, they don't, again, we're told as children, if, if my young boy wants you know if my young toddler wants to wear girls clothes i should be okay with that if my daughter wants to wear boys clothes i should be okay with that because they're just exploring why are you stopping my daughter from wearing hijab if she's just exploring yes. it doesn't make sense yes it's, it's shallow when you think about it really that they're so concerned with a piece of fabric on their head and like ultimately you know I remember from being back at school you know all the teachers wanted was for the students to look smart in their uniform yeah. and what is more smart than a little girl wearing a headscarf you know like I just think that's beautiful and I think one of the major problems and why there are so many misconceptions around the hijab is just the fact that I don't think people are willing to talk. Mm. I don't think people are willing to sit and have conversations as such. And I think as Muslim women, we must be so open yes. and we must be we must be there to answer the questions of non-Muslims as well as our own children as well. For sure. Now, earlier you mentioned, you know, you would suggest encouraging a child to wear the hijab like you would encourage them to do their homework, for example. Um, do you have, like, any personal tips and tricks that you would use to encourage a young girl to... Um, wear the hijab? I think um, it's to do with all the rulings of Islam. Before I actually go into the rulings, I would ensure that my child understands that there is a creator mm -hmm. that has created them, mm -hmm. um, understands that this creator of the universe chose to take time out to create my child. Mm -hmm. So that makes her or him feel very unique and very special. Mm -hmm. And again, building that confidence within the child. So no matter what anyone else tells you, you're special because the creator chose to create you. That's really powerful. It is, yes. Um, and then sort of getting them to build a relationship with the creator. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not only through the formal prayers and so forth, but actually just talking to him, mm -hmm. making him your best friend, you know, your, the, 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 you know the, the entity that you turn to when you want to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. um, so building a relationship of love with the Creator, mm -hmm. getting my child to understand that we have not been created for this world, but a higher purpose. We've been created for paradise, you know, and we can only reach paradise if we reach the potential that God has given us. Mm -hmm. um, and that is to do with the soul. And again, explaining to my child from a very young age that they are not their body, they're their soul. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of different ways and, you know, methods you can use to do that. But once they realize that they're their soul, then actually, again, enforce, you know, in making them understand that the rulings of Islam are there for the soul, not for the body. Mm -hmm. So when God says something is wajib, it's because the soul absolutely requires it. When he says something is haram, it is because it's very, very detrimental to the soul. Mm -hmm. It may benefit the body, but the, rule, the purpose of the ruling is for the soul, not the body. 
And if I don't know what my soul looks like, if I don't know if my soul is healthy or, or unhealthy, if my soul is upset, if my soul is sad, if I can't tell you anything about my soul, how can I take care of my soul? Mm-hmm. And this is where God's love and mercy comes in to teach me to take care of my soul. Yeah, absolutely. I think many of us just don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Like we just have this idea that like he sits up there and decides, okay, right, this is haram, this is halal, you know, just because he feels like it, not because he cares for us. Like he's al wudud he's the most That's loving and sure. he wants the best for us. And I think that's really important to teach your child about the love of Allah rather than the wrath of Allah. Yes. Instead of telling your child, oh, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell or God's oh, going to punish God. you. You know, actually, yes, you know what? Yes. You want to do this because God loves you and he wants mm. to take care of you. And it makes no difference to him whether you do it or not. He's mm-hmm. doing it because he loves you and mm-hmm. he wants you to reach your potential, your perfection and therefore go into paradise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And um, I think we should all remember that like Allah is always there he's there 24 hours a day and we can turn to him when ever we need anything if we're struggling with our hijab or any other aspect of our lives we can turn to him and of course we have the wasila of the holy ahl al-bayt alayhim was salam how many times have sisters turned to say the fatima alayhi salam or say the zainab alayhi salam and ask them for help with their hijab and then they've just become so strengthened and empowered with their identity yeah, sure. and again that can only happen if that child know something about that holy personality yes. if that child has bought is, is built a relationship with that holy personality mm-hmm. you know just knowing the name of the holy personality knowing their birthday death day mm-hmm. knowing where they're buried is that's not going to build a relationship so mm-hmm. actually like for example getting them to go to ziara oh, yes. getting them to talk to the to the holy personalities making them realize that these holy personalities their physical bodies may be dead mm-hmm. but they're not yes. and they can hear us and they can answer to the salam that we give them mm-hmm. um, and and you know knowing a little bit about their lives so that they can actually use them as role models mm-hmm. again our children look up to us as parents for role models i think it's really important to teach my child from a very very young age that you know the, there are better role models than me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to mess up. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not an infallible. I will mess up. Uh, you don't want to use me as a role model. Mm. I'm, I choose to use so-and-so as a role model. But you have an option of choosing any of the 14 master me. Choose whoever you yes. feel closest to and use, that, you know, use, use them as role models. Build relationships with them. Talk to them. Mm-hmm. And again, like you say, ask for help. Mm. I remember my daughter, you know, when she was um, swim, she, she had to go swimming. Um, to, um, I don't know, pass some sort of swimming test or something. Mm-hmm. And obviously she was in the full burkini, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. And, and she was very um, conscious of it. Yes. And she actually told me, you know, she, she went into the um, changing rooms and she was very nervous and she was, you know, very, very um, upset. And she mm-hmm. came out of the changing room and she was a totally different person. She was very confident. She came out, she walked out <laughs> and she just walked. And I said, so what happened? And she said, I had a little word with say, the Zainab alayhi salam. And, oh. and I know she's got it sorted. It's fine. She's, she's by my side. She's taking care of it. <laughs> and just, you know, for her, it, it gave us so much confidence. And again, when she strutted out there with confidence, mm. no one batted an eyelid because mm. she had the confidence to pull it off. Mm. Whereas when we go there quite meek and worried about what other people are thinking, we're sort of opening the doors for them then to make us feel uncomfortable because we've, made ourselves feel uncomfortable if that makes sense yeah it does make sense and mashallah like we really are spoiled for the choice when it comes to the ahl al <laughs> oh, salam like you know we so many great personalities <clears throat> and even you know figures like such as abu fadl al-abbas yeah. alayhi salam who was so concerned with the hijab of his sister sayyida zainab alayhi salam and Yes, the um, going on Ziara, I know for me personally, it's one of the most powerful things because what um, inspired me to wear the charter every day was visiting Iraq for the first time. Sure. And when I saw all these ladies wearing the charter and seeing how beautiful they look, like, I was reminded of Sayyidah Fatima alayhi salam and the ladies of the Ahl al-Bayt. Even though we don't have any pictures of them, mm. we don't know what they looked like. But like, it's just the feeling that you get from that. It's just, it's so hard to put into words. It's so powerful. But it's your connection, right? With yes. These, 
amazing human beings that God has created, and that that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's I think one we feel our children a lot of the times we feel our children are too young to take to ziara so we wait till they're older and we don't realize the positive effect of the ziara even on babies the spiritual energy and the positivity that they get from the ziara is amazing it's you know we we shouldn't belittle it at all and we shouldn't wait till they're older we should take them you know as soon as we can and as many times as we can and secondly those who do take them um I think we need to be cautious that we don't make it a tick box exercise where we mm -hmm. go there and we feel we need to recite this Ziara and this Dua and this, this, and, 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 and that's it. And there's no sort of connection. Yes. There's no, mm -hmm. you know, like um, no sort of reflect, self-reflection. A lot of the, the changes that happen are from the self-reflection. Where mm -hmm. am I? Where should I be? Why aren't I where I am? How is, th is this holy personality going to help me to get where I am? Mm -hmm. You know, what am I going to learn from this holy personality? Mm -hmm. How do I connect to them? How am I going to take this back home when I'm in the West where the Zuri is not in front of me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it's really important to actually not only just go there, but actually use that opportunity to connect to these amazing, amazing human beings that God has created mm -hmm. and learn from their lives. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, thank you so much, Sister Marcel Majafar. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time. But dear viewers, please stay tuned for the next segment where your fit questions will be answered by Sheikh Ayub Rashid.